So we're slowly working our way through Avaduta's list of his gurus from this material world and the things that he's learned from them. And today we're going to look at having the air as our guru. He says, as the air remains unaffected by good or bad odors, so a wise man, though moving amongst the sense objects of diverse characters, should remain untouched by good or evil. Even though housed in an earthly body and subject to its limitations, a truly wise man, his consciousness fixed on the illimitable divine self, remains quiet, equable, and unmoved. There's an interesting couple of things in there. One, the nature of air. Air is just what it is. It carries all of its sense, but it's unchanged by them. And, you know, for the divine seeker, well, actually for everybody, but certainly those seeking to know truth or to find out the riddle of life as to who we are and what we are, this notion of having eyes on this illimitable divine self within us, that this is the biggest part of spiritual life, is finding that part of you that is unchanging, it takes a, a very quiet mind, a very pure mind, uh, and it takes a lot of introspection because you long ago became uh, accustomed to this slight, even tone of bliss that is behind your experience. Uh, because of that uh, dullness, because of the fact that we've stopped paying attention to the white noise of these truths, we've become engaged in mind and in body and have forgotten this blissful, content, ever-present, call it the white noise of the divine, uh, that we've, we've forgotten the ordinary. We can no longer see it anymore. And because it doesn't move or flash or change, it's hard to find it. It's hard to touch it. It's hard to know it. It's a space that's implied. It's not objectified. You can't touch it because after all, it is you, the observer. Knowing this, knowing your nature, and knowing that you merely inhabit this body and mind, that you're merely using these tools for a brief time, and knowing the nature of everything that involves the body-mind to be elusive, to be changing, effervescent, unlasting, you remain equanimous by sitting in that knowledge of yourself and listening again for the first time to that quiet current of bliss unchanging within you. That is your very nature. And so knowing this, we go through life undisturbed, engaged in love and compassion, caring and giving, and being, uh, being uh, true to love as ourselves. We go forward, but we're not vulnerable in our ego self, right? It's egos that get angry, egos that feel like someone hasn't respected them enough. It's egos that get perturbed. It's bodies that get tired. You know, it's bodies that get sick. And having that little bit of difference between you knowing who you are, that you are not these things, but you're merely driving the body, as it were, a passenger in the body at this time, you're not quite as deeply disturbed by these things. And the waves of life, the good and the bad, the good and the evil, wash over you. And you, remaining secure in the knowledge of your eternal self, are unmoved by them, undisturbed by them, not pushed out of your center by them. So this is the lesson of the air.